Hi, everyone. I hope you're all doing great today. Okay, so I'm here to fulfill yet another promise I made to my followers uh, when I said that I was going to make out time to explain to us what I understand the whole unipolar, multipolar dichotomy to be. And that's what I want to try my best to do right now. It's a bit multifaceted and a little bit bogus, but I'll try my best to like break it down in a way that every single person out there will understand in a layman's language, if you would. Okay, so what is a unipolar world order? In international politics and systems, the unipolar world order is the distribution of power in which only one state or institution or block or organization dominates the economic, social, cultural, and military influence over the globe. Basically, what this definition is saying is that Whenever you notice that only one institution or one organization or one country or one group of people are the ones who dominate the economic, social, cultural, and the military influence over the whole world, that you are looking at a unipolar world. Now, let me put it to you today that all your life, all your life, you have been living in a unipolar world. Can you believe that? So what that means is all the economic influence that you have had or learned about all your life have been controlled by just one group of people. All the social construct that you have always grown up to know that even preceded your birth, has been controlled by just one group of people. All the cultural construct that you are aware of or that you grew up into has been controlled by the same group of people. The military influence you have always had, heard about, studied, seen at play, all of it controlled by the same group of people. Okay, so... I know someone is sitting there now wondering, what is this man talking about? I'm going to break it down. God help me. I want to break it down for you to understand better. Okay? So you know what this whole war between Russia and the West is all about. So you know why a whole nation, Ukraine, had to be sacrificed. Because this thing is a behemoth. The monstrosity is beyond human comprehension. That's why I am so sure that Russia would not have dared on their own to start this if not that they were drawn into it. So, everybody who uses banks understand what is called the SWIFT system of transfers. What is SWIFT then? The Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Communication SWIFT system powers most international money and security transfers. SWIFT is a vast messaging network used by financial institutions to quickly, accurately, and securely send and receive information such as money transfer instructions. Money transfer instructions. So all this Western Union money transfer, money gram transfer, all these transfers going on. Without SWIFT, you can't do them. The SWIFT system replaced Telex. Telex was in the past. And when SWIFT was born, they say SWIFT was a much better system because Telex was porous, was vulnerable, was easy to take advantage of, and made people's transactions very vulnerable. So SWIFT is a much more upgraded version of whatever Telex was to the banking institution all over the world. 
Now, if you have a bank anywhere in the world, you definitely know that there is something called transfers, international transfers and stuff like that. It is the SWIFT system that you use for the messaging that makes that transfer work. If money is sent from Nigeria to UK or from America to Spain, there has to be a messaging that goes from the place of sending to the place of receiving so that when that message is received, the transaction is cleared and then debit happens. Without this, you are useless as a bank. It is SWIFT that controls it. Now, I'm going to tell you this today. The same people who control the unipolar world order that we grew up into are the ones who still control the SWIFT system that is used in about 200 countries around the world. Pretty much the whole world uses SWIFT. So, I want to read you quickly the key takeaways Okay, about SWIFT. The takeaways are this. Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, SWIFT, is a member-owned cooperative that provides safe and secure financial transactions for its members. This payment network allows individuals and businesses to take electronic or card payments even if the customers or vendor uses a different bank than the payee. SWIFT is the largest and most streamlined method for international payments and settlements. Now, listen to this. It says SWIFT has been used to impose economic sanctions on Iran, Russia, and Belarus. Why? Because the people who are at war with Russia are at war with Belarus and Iran, the two countries that are staunchly behind Russia, and the system which they control, which is part of the whole unipolar world order, has now been deployed to impose sanctions on Russia for ever daring to challenge the unipolar world order. In case you don't believe they are the same people who are fighting the war that is happening in Europe, let me read you the owners of SWIFT. Here, the caption says, who owns SWIFT system? Listen carefully. SWIFT is a member-owned cooperative controlled by its shareholders, certain member financial institutions representing some firms worldwide. SWIFT is overseen by the group of 10 countries, G10 central banks. These countries are Belgium, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Netherlands, Sweden, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. The European country of Belgium acts as the lead overseer alongside other members such as the U.S. Federal Reserve. Do you get the idea right now? Every single one of the countries mentioned are on the opposing side against Russia in the Ukraine war. So these are the same people who control SWIFT. And not only that, the banking system of Africa, of much of the whole world, is controlled out of England. I'm going to say something to you now that you probably have heard me say before, or maybe you never heard it said anywhere before. You see, the owners and controllers of this unipolar world, they are people who descended from the 1884-1885 gang of colonialists who sat together in Berlin and divided the African continent and give us imaginary borders that they have enforced through all kinds of means till today. They are the same people who have colonized almost 80 something to 90% of the world as we know it today. Even though we hear there are some independence and all of that has happened, they're still running these nations from underground, which is why we have what you call the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization that France signed with its colonies in Africa. 
So these people came from that same gang of 1884-1885. They created a unipolar world in which they still have power over all the people they colonized back in the days and then much of our world. So in the unipolar world order, there are three different arms that I'm going to explain to you now. It's very important. The one is the one that controls the financial system of the whole world. And that is represented by the city of London. I've talked about this before in some of my videos. The city of London is the financial capital of the world owned by these owners. These are the people who run the unipolar world and the financial capital from where they control the finances of the world, from where they control all the banks, nearly all the banks in our world, is the city of London, a city within a city. Now, the religious capital of this unipolar world order is Vatican City. You may not know it. You will say, oh, but I'm not a Catholic. My denomination is Pentecostal. It is Protestant. It's this, is that. I put it to you today that every single denomination under Christianity today is controlled out of the Vatican, one way or the other. I'm not making this up. I'm not hallucinating. I'm telling you what I know. I have a video coming up soon where I will just give you all, connect all the dots for you and show you in black and white. And not just even Christian religion, even most of the religions of the world controlled out of the Vatican because the Vatican is the religious capital of this unipolar world order. So wherever they stand on any issue, the Vatican will stand there. While London is the financial capital and economic capital of this unipolar world order, Vatican is the religious capital. Now, it's remaining one, right, out of the three. The third one is the city of Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is the military capital of this unipolar world order. That's why... Of all the nations on earth, no other nation has more military bases outside of its parent nation than the United States of America. There's no country on earth that you tell me they have military bases outside of their own nation more than the U.S. They even have a specialized one they created for Africa. Almost on every single country, every single place in Africa. It's called AFRICOM, which is the African command of the U.S. Army. That's why people call America the policeman of the world. Remember what we read about the unipolar world. In international politics and system, the unipolar world order is the distribution of power, distribution of power in which only one state, one group, one organization, one establishment basically dominates the economic the social, the cultural, and the military influence over the whole world. So who dominates the economic influence over you? To the best of your knowledge, the same unipolar world order. That's why all our banks, they cannot breathe if they don't have connections with England, with the city of London. You can't run a bank effectively if you're not tied to the institution that they have established in the city of London. That's where the financial movement of the whole world is controlled out of. It's England. And again, they established IMF and they established World Bank, the same group of people that now reinforce the essence and the importance of this same city of London. So you are handicapped if you try to cut away from them. You don't have any business to do with banking in the world, especially in Africa. 
That's why the economic agenda, the developmental agenda of Africa is being driven by foreigners. My sister, Rikana, was asking, you can't go to China and all those places and see foreigners driving their economic or developmental agenda. But the developmental agenda of Africa, the economic structure and facility and facilitation of Africa is dependent on foreigners because we don't have an independent banking system. Our system is connected. The apron strings are connected to what they have established in the city of London. The other one is social. You know, I'm in the media. I'm in entertainment. I know how powerful movies and music can be. These are culture benders, right? And they gave us all of these things. And they gave us sports. So they divided it very well. Hollywood provides the movies. Europe provides the sports. Thank God we managed in Nigeria and much of West Africa, or even Africa, to take our share of that slot. And we control what our people see today. That's why I thank God for Nollywood. But let's go to the one that is really going to break your heart. Do you remember back in the days when we used to have a lot of local leagues in football? <laughs> All those local clubs. Do you remember when we used to have canoe pillars? You have rangers, you have Bini ones, you have from different states. Where are all those clubs today in Nigeria? I lived in Ghana in the early 2000s, and the rave of that moment was the rivalry between Asante Kotoko and Accra Hearts of Oak. Whenever they played, there was stampede. It was, it was massive. Nobody watched anything else. Because these were local clubs that grew and became giants and foreign Football teams were coming to buy players from our clubs. Where is all that today? It's gone. Can you even explain how all of a sudden we switch from our local teams and everybody now has a team in Europe? Every single man on the continent of Africa today that knows what football is, that likes football, that is obsessed with football. Ask them. Many of them have even forgotten the names of the local clubs we used to have in Africa. Every one of them today has got some club in Europe that they are ready to die for. See that Man U or Chelsea or Liverpool or any one of them or Man City. We all have got clubs now. Yeah, Arsenal, Gunners for life. What about ours? What happened to them? When they have very evil agendas they want to unleash on the masses, they can fix any one of those games anytime and get you glued to your TV while the agenda is playing out in the background. By the time you're done and your team wins or loses, you wake up into a new reality that you can't get yourself out of. Now they have full control of it because it's controlled out of their own domain. You don't have access to it anymore. Something we used to have. They probably came and sat down and said, no, if we leave this heavy machinery in their hands, how are we going to be able to distract them whenever we need to? And before you know it, boom, everything just died. You know why? I feel because they always have direct involvement in the governments they help to bring to life in Africa. So this, I have witnessed with my eyes in Abuja, Nigeria many years ago where a guy was sent from Washington to come and advise and tell the education ministry of Nigeria what to do. They send them from to go and tell them to impose policies on them. That's why in Nigeria, we suddenly stopped studying history in Nigeria. Where do you think it came from? 
They impose policies because you are in a unipolar world and you can't say no. If you say no, who are you going to run to? Are you going to run to Japan or Canada or where they are all lumped into one? They control the unipolar world. That's why unipolar world was the agents of slavery. So they got you with sports. You no longer care about your own football. You watch their own soccer. You're ready to die. They now have to even use the faces of the European football stars to advertise on the continent of Africa because we have lost ours. They're gone, buried forever, except if God comes to help us. That's why I thank God every day for Nollywood. If not, many of you guys will know Hollywood stars more than you even know me and my colleagues, right? What Nollywood has done is what our sports establishments, the sporting establishment should have done. We lost it. And they took it. Culture. Now, let's look at culture. Remember, we're talking about someone who has full control over the cultural influence that is over you. So let's look at culture. How do they exert a lot of influence over culture with respect to Africans? You saw it. You have seen it with your eyes. What they have done. They became so complacent about the stranglehold they had over Africans that they have the audacity to try to change who we are. They started with comprehensive sexuality education with which they started to pervert our children under the cloak of sex education. No, it wasn't sex education. It was sexual perversion. Because they started teaching all kinds of alien things to children, underage children, telling them that masturbation was okay, telling them they could indulge in mutual masturbation, teaching them how to go through sex change and all kinds of satanic ideologies. On top of that, even when nations, sovereign nations in Africa decided they were not going to have anything to do with this immoral lifestyle, these same people decided that it was okay to harass these nations in Africa. Uganda is one clear example. The parliament came together and they voted overwhelmingly against the LGBTQ lifestyle in Uganda. And rather than accept the fact that this nation is sovereign, and has the right to decide where to go on this issue. The West decided they were going to hit pressure on Uganda to harass them, to coerce them, to bully them into accepting a satanic alien lifestyle because the owners of the unipolar world order believe they own us, they own you, you are a slave. They think because you don't have an option, you cannot do anything. On top of that, guess who came out later to say, we are no longer giving money to Uganda. It is World Bank. What did I tell you earlier? These same guys own World Bank. They own IMF. They own United Nations. They own everything. So today, why we are all talking and breathing this little fresh air of freedom that is coming from afar is because we now have a guy who shows up on the scene and says, I am going to stake anything I have to stake to provide you with an alternative, which means we are now about to have a multipolar world. And that guy is who? Vladimir Putin. What about news? What news do you listen to? 